next library we'll be ready to install is NGRX Schematics. And this will allow us to generate from within the command line a bunch of different files like reducer files, action files. In this video, we'll generate a store from within the command line using the NGRX Schematics library. To go to the documentation, click on this link and it will send you right to the NGRX Schematics page. And then the first thing we'll need to do is install it like we did with the NGRX store. So click on installation. And I'm running Angular 9 in this project. So anything over Angular 6, this will be fine right here. Copy this. Let's get this installing a while. Open up the project. At the root level, paste and hit enter. It's going to ask you, do you want to use default collection? I'll say yes. And I already have this installed. So all it's going to do is update the Angular JSON file. Now we're ready to start generating things from the command line. Let's check out the documentation and see all the different things we could generate. You go inside of NGRX schematics and then click on the schematics link. Here are all the different things we could generate from within the command line. And we'll start off with the store. And here you run this basic command and you could generate a store. And also you have a bunch of flags or a bunch of options you could use as well to specify, for example, what which module you want to apply it to. Is this a root store or a feature store? And by default, they set it to a feature store. So basically what this does is when it's configuring it to your module, it will set either for root or for feature. For root is like your global store, and for feature is like a child store that you have within a module within your application. And then also what we're going to use in this this video is state path. This defines the folder name that we're going to be storing our store on. Now by default, they set it to reducers. We're going to call it store. I'm going to be changing that. And also we'll use this. This defines the interface name. And by default, it's called state. I'm going to call it app state instead. Let's go back up here and we'll copy this. And let's run this command right out of the box without using any options. We'll paste this in the command line. And then also I'm going to add on a flag called dry run. This will not make any changes to our application, but it will show us what it will do if we run this command. So add in dry run and hit enter. And Google's going to ask us, do we want to share? I'll say yes. And then now it's going to ask us which module do we want to apply this to? The reason it's asking us that is because we didn't use the slash slash module flag but uh, let's go ahead and enter that and it's going to be app module all right so this is the changes it will make if we run the command and it creates a file a index file and this is where we're going to register all our reducers in the future and we'll get into that pretty soon and it automatically creates us a folder called reducers i want to change that to store that's just a personal preference and then it's going to update our app module file Let's change that name from reducers to store. Now I already have a snippet so you don't have to type out these long commands. And if we go back to the home page, go back to this page, right here I have a snippets link. Just click on that. And I already have the command all created for you so you don't have to type it all out. Copy this. Let's go back to our project. I'm going to clear this out and hit enter. Now in this command we have the slash slash module and we're telling it what module we want to apply it to and then here we're telling it is it a parent store is it a like a global store is it our root store or is it a child store and in this case i'm saying it's a it's a parent store it's the our root store and then the state path i want to change that folder name from reducers to store and then i want to change the the name of the interface from state to app state. And that is pretty much it. If you hit enter, it will generate our store. Let's check out the changes it made to our application. I'll close this down. And if you hit control P in Visual Studios, and then just search for it, index TS file, that is the file we just generated. And then uh, here is our interface name. So within the command line, if I open that back up, Right here, the app state, that is how we set it by using this flag, the state interface. And we set that name to app state instead of state. And it does it automatically for, for all of these. And also if we go into our, our file structure and at the root level, 
inside of our app, we created a folder name called store. Normally this would be called reducers if we didn't use that other flag right here, this one, the state path. So we changed the name of that folder. And then we also configured it to our app module file. And let's check that out real quick. We'll open that up. And then it automatically added this to our module. And it used the for root as we specified in the command line as well. If we go back in the command line, right here we specified that we wanted to use the root. We set that to true. Now if you set this to false, or actually if, if you don't use this command at all, it would automatically set that to false. And if we go back in here, and then this would be for feature then if you, if you didn't. So what's going on here is it's pulling in this reducers variable. And where is that getting that from? Well, that's getting it from that new index file that was just generated. Let's open that up. So here is where we're going to register all our reducers throughout the application. So whenever we create a reducer, we're going to tell this file about it. And that's how we're going to pull them all in where we can see it. Whenever we use this app state, we'll be able to see all our different states. And I'll be showing you that in the future. But just think of this page as where we register all our reducers. That's pretty much it. And then here, the meta reducer is very similar to middleware, and we'll be definitely getting into that in, in the future videos as well. Now we have just generated our global store, so we close this down. We're configuring it with our module, and then we're pulling in our meta reducers, and then these runtime checks, we'll be getting into that in the future videos as well. But this looks really good. Now, there's one thing we could do is get rid of this right here. We don't need this. We pulled this in when we added in NGRX store, when we downloaded the library. And we could just get rid of that and just use this now. And that should be good. Now, there's one more thing we want to do is restart the application. So make sure you save the file, open up the command line, and I'll clear everything out. And actually, I already have it running in another window here. I'm going to shut it down. Clear everything out and then run npm run dev since we made changes to our main app module i just want to make sure we restart it and then make sure you refresh it and then the application should still be running without any problems and right click and you shouldn't be getting any errors pertaining to like our store or anything like that like our debugger should still be working and that's great now in the next video let's create our first action